Ham Radio 2.0. Hey guys, we're starting early tonight. Guess what? It's 6.45 in Texas. Ooh, look at that. That's that's good. That's good timing. Good timing. Excellent. Good timing. Good timing. Good timing. Hey, check this out, guys. Here's a real quick message from my friends at Bridgecom Systems. If you're a ham looking to get into DMR, you need to go check out their plug and play package link in the description. It's a handheld DMR radio and digital hotspot combo that comes pre-programmed with all of your information so that all you have to do to get on the air is just turn it on and press the PTT button. You'll also get access to their beginner to expert courses about your DMR gear through Bridgecom University. Give them a call at 816-532-8451 to talk with their dedicated in-house radio advisors. They are happy to help you out. Thank you, Bridgecom, for supporting this channel. All right, and there it is. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we have a playlist tonight, folks. And the reason I'm starting a little bit early, I'm starting about 15 minutes early. Those of you who have watched me before, I usually start at 7 p.m. Texas time, which is uh, 0100 UTC uh, Monday morning. Starting 15 minutes early tonight because we do have a playlist tonight. The playlist is linked at the top of the chat. So click on the playlist at the top of the chat. Frank's going live at 8 p.m. in about an hour and 15 minutes. So we got an hour and 15 minutes to do the show, which is plenty of time. And then Rhea's going live after that. Rhea goes live most Sunday nights after me. So we might start coordinating that a little bit because I want more people to go watch her channel. She's got some good information out there, but check on the playlist at the top of the chat if you're out there. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HW. This is Ham Radio 2.0. We're going to talk about this thing tonight, which this is a pretty sweet radio. I tell you what, I have not gone all Linux nerd on it and hacked it like a couple of these yahoos that I'm I, I invited on tonight. I haven't done that yet. I'm probably not going to do that. Honestly, I just want to, like, get on the radio. I don't want to have a Linux project. But, hey, you know what? To each his own. It's 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 cool that it does some of the stuff. So I just updated my firmware about an hour and a half ago, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Special special shout-out to, uh, uh, let's see, Nick Smith, N5SKT, Andy Callie, and all the people in green text in the chat tonight. You guys are my YouTube channel members, and I thank you for being here and supporting the show like you do. I appreciate those folks being here tonight. A couple of really quick announcements. We're going to hop right into it. Let me get to the right screen here. Boom. No, not that one. This one right here. So, Ham Radio 2.0, 100K giveaway. I've announced this a couple of times. Why is that sounding like that? Um, announced this a couple of times. It is uh, coming up quick. We're less. We're about 250 subs away from the 100K mark. And um, I think I'm going to mute that. Hey, there's Ham Radio DX. What's up, Hayden? How are you tonight? Uh, so, yeah, we're about, to, we're about to hit the 100K. Go sign up with the link that Frank will share in the chat here in a second. Hopefully he still has that link. Uh, I'm giving away a Flex Radio 6400M and several other things. Uh, Radio Oddity is donating some stuff. Ham Radio Prep is donating a couple logbooks. I think, um, who else? Somebody else is donating something. RNL is going to donate some uh, some nano VNA stuff. So uh, be sure to sign up for that. It's going to be a fun thing. Uh, in the spirit of the giving season, I announced this on the happy hour last Friday, two days ago, and I announced this on my live stream last Wednesday. So the Lee family, who is the family behind hemradio.world on YouTube and hemradio.world, the website, um, James is in the hospital with heart surgery, and it is not going as planned. He's okay right now, last I heard, um, but it's going to be a slow and long recovery once he... In fact, they, they haven't even given him the green light yet. He's still in intensive care, so prayers and thoughts for him, absolutely. Uh, but I'm raising money for the Lee family to help with their financial situation because it's what the ham radio community does for one another. I've seen this happen a lot, uh, you guys really step up when the when the need arises, and I appreciate everyone who's who's able to contribute. If you can't contribute, that's okay, it, it's all right. But if you can, even five or ten bucks, or more than that, is cool. Um, check out this link in the description that Frank will put in there in a minute, 
and help them out today. 46.19 is what it was at about an hour ago before I started the stream. Yeah, that's still what it's at right now. And um, we're going to try to help them out for this holiday season. It's a, it's a really crappy time to have a family member in the hospital. Crappy time of the year. Not that there's any really good time for that, but especially not during this time of the year. This is the playlist I was just mentioning. Uh, so we're live. Uh, Red Summit RF was live with several special guests, including George from Pac Pactena a little bit ago. We're live right now. After this, Frank is going live to celebrate one year on YouTube, and then Rhea's got a live stream after that. So all good stuff there. Looking forward to all that. Check the link in the top of the chat for that playlist there. Okay, let's uh, switch this screen over here, and we're going to talk about... No, not that one, not that one. Right? I'm going to figure out which one I want to do. I'm going to figure out which one I want to do here. Uh, not that one. How about that one right there? No. I'm talking to myself, guys, in case y'all didn't notice yet, uh, but it's okay. You know, it's my show, so I can do that. Uh, I seriously do need to find that... There it is. Zoom meeting right there. Let's kill that and kill that and kill that. No, not that one. Okay, I got to figure out. There it is right there. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. And gosh, I don't know what's wrong with my camera. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm good here. I'm good. I'm going to figure this out one of these days. One of these days, I'll figure this out. Uh, it's not cooperating with me quite yet, but where is, oh, there it is right there. How about that one? Okay, let's, let's, uh, I was trying to do a different view. That view is not working. So I'm going to put it on this view. Everybody can hear these guys right now. And now you're unmuted. Hey, sorry about that. I was trying to get a different view on there, but it's not working. Hey, what's up? Uh, what's up guys? How are y'all tonight? Not much, man. I can't find the link for your, um, Lee's family. Go okay, find me. That's fine. I'll share it. No problem. All right. Uh, no I problem. give it up to the other guys. I just wanted to <laughs> throw that out there. Uh, Sean, Steve, hey. how are you guys doing tonight? Great. You're doing great. Amazing. Thank you. Oh, good, good, good. I'll pass my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> really? You're in yeah. central time, dude. Come on. Oh, 4 30 p.m. The sun goes down. Oh. I'm to bed. 4 30. Where the heck are you? You're not, you're not in Alaska. I'm Come in on. Chicago. I uh, know, but it, it's 4 30. Gosh. My goodness. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so we're going to talk about the X sixty one hundred tonight, and my uh, my overhead cam is is fouling up on me, which is one of my problems here. But that's okay; I'll fix that. So, um, you guys give a quick. Um, I want to talk about what the quirks are we found, which I updated mm. my firmware about an hour and a half ago to the latest twelve dot twelve oh seven firmware so 1207 is december 7th that was the date of the firmware so it's like what 11 days old now 12 days old now um so that's the latest one i found on radiodity's website i don't know if anybody's got anything uh no, later that's, than that that's but, accurate yeah that's, that's accurate the, yeah. the next okay. one's supposed to come out in january and it's supposed okay. to fix uh, some of the issues uh as we know this didn't ship with wi-fi it didn't ship with bluetooth right. enabled enabled at least right correct uh, i found it <laughs> yeah yeah Got so it. you guys go ahead and talk about the hat i know you've been doing some hacking some uh some rooting uh some linux uh kung fu on the radio so uh go ahead and talk about that real quick if you don't want if you don't mind steve go ahead yeah, so I got this thing, uh, I don't know, two two weeks ago, two and a half mm -hmm. weeks ago, and I've just been doing nonstop tinkering on this thing. When I got it, I did a live stream, got it on the air, started playing with it, learning about it, figuring out what was good, what was bad, who needs a manual? And the manual for this <laughs> thing is, it's like, all it does is tell you the, like, the gen button is spelled G-E-N for general <laughs> and the app button is spelled app it's like I, uh, I can tell that just by looking and then i got people that are hounding okay. me like why didn't you read the manual first like uh that that's not how unboxings work but oh uh, right right yeah like i saw it, that like it would have helped mm -hmm. anyway though yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so i started digging through that and then like all of a sudden that like where's wi-fi where's bluetooth what's going on with this yeah. thing what's what you know like there's some some very obvious promises that were not delivered upon and i wanted to dig into that and I think dude actually unscrewed his case before I unscrewed mine. He was a little more brave. I, I, I kind of yeah. trusted the warranty sticker a little bit, but uh, I figured out a way to, to boot this thing and crack the root password. Mm -hmm. And 
so what I did was I actually reset the root password and then somebody else, we nice. were talking on the Toads Discord about like, maybe we should run this through a password cracker or something and try and figure it out. But we don't know all of the extended Chinese characters. And is this mm. UTF-8 or is this, is this uh, you know, some other crazy encoding scheme or what about special characters? Mm. Yeah, the, the password was, we'll, we'll just say the password's as easy as one, two, three. Mm. Um, we were yeah. thinking way too hard. Probably is one, two, three. <laughs> that yeah. was the password to my matched luggage. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That I, I don't doubt that, Frank. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and then so meanwhile, Steve was going to work with Linux, and he's running all yeah. these different operating systems and and trying different things. And I started kind of going through the file structure and seeing what there was. And you know, I was probably at that point the first to determine that they were using Qt Design, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, kind of where the file structure took place. I opened up the the executable file in a hex editor and I started editing things, but nothing was quite going, mm -hmm. you know, like, so for example, I would try to do like a 12, 12 watt mod instead of a 10 watt. Mm. Um, and okay. it just didn't work. Uh, but that's when we reached out to other members of the toads discord and kind of like everybody came together and was like, well, we figured this out. We figured that out. And they don't even have these radios yet. Oh, so really? So they're like, well, Jeez. well, yeah, I just modified this, try this out and let me know if it changes anything. And all of a sudden, you know, with the help of the Toads Discord, we opened up to, you know, we opened up this thing to be an all band radio. Well, mm -hmm. uh, all frequency radio at that. Um, so, so you know, that means, so that means wide band received, correct? No, wide band transmit. Well, but transmit <laughs> also, yes, I understand that. But wide, so you got a wide band receiver because that was one of the things that people really liked about the 705 was that it had wide band receive. So you could, you could like put a, put a directional Yagi on it and go around to find the RFI in your, in your house a little bit easier with it. Sure. Um, sure. But so the, uh, for the receive, nothing mm -hmm. has really changed. Uh, okay. Yeah. Basically it's still 750 kilohertz all the way up to 55 megahertz. Okay. Um, and we don't know yet if that's a limitation of the hardware or if that's some kind of coded limitation in the software. So was it that, was it that, full receive range before your hack yeah i think so yeah okay so yeah. so your hack just opened up the transmit side of it my understanding yeah i okay i watched a couple of y'all's videos my understanding was that it would skip you know it skip from 15 to 17 meters and then it would skip frequencies from 17 to 20 meters or something like that and it didn't it didn't have a full like uh what do they call it dc to daylight receive range but maybe it does i mean out of the so box if you go into your radio and you hit the band stack button, there's yep. the ham band choice. And then what does it change to? It changes to all band. And I think that's what you're talking about. It'll it'll go through only the ham bands okay. or it'll, oh, go, it'll go through to all band. Okay. All the way. So where is that? But that's not a, it's under radio settings. Uh-huh. And then use the MFK knob at the bottom to roll around to the bottom. Right. Not that knob, the lower knob. There you go. That, yeah, there that's that knob right working. there. It's yeah, working. Yeah, that one band it's, stack. You just can't. You just can't see it. It's working. Yeah, band I'm, stack. I'm seeing a delay. Uh, it probably is. Yeah. No, you know what? I'm watching Ham Radio Dudes Radio, wondering why you're not. In the <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Yeah, wrong. So okay. So yeah. yeah. So it's ham band right now. Uh, all band. Oh, there it is. Okay, ham band and all band are the two. Right. Mm -hmm. I, okay, I hadn't seen that yet. So right there. Um, let me put this. I put this up here because I don't have a zoom lens right here. So right there it is. Somewhere I've got a pen around here. Uh, right there it says band stack, and it, which if you press down on this button, it changes from ham band to all band. So that's cool. Okay, good, good, good deal. You see how my my camera froze like that? I'm having troubles with my capture card. For whatever reason, it's doing that on that camera right there. I got to get a new capture card. That capture card's kind of old, so I've had it for a long time. But okay, good. So okay, so it's got wideband receive already. That's good. I didn't know that. I thought you guys had the hack where... Um, it was uh, not only you open the transmit, but you open the receive also. So it's just it's so good to know that you open the transmit. Things, there are a lot of things that this radio was supposed to do that it didn't do that right. we made it do. Correct. So that wasn't one of them, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I right. know that I know that. Uh, yeah, because I I posted something on uh, on Instagram when I took this thing out to the 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 only video I've posted to my channel so far is. I took this thing out to the hunting lease. It had the stock firmware in it, and uh, that was the one with the with the problem of of when you turn would turn it from volume zero to volume one. It was really loud, mm -hmm. and yeah, then you change you yeah. change volumes, and it didn't change. Yeah, that's been fixed in the latest firmware that I have, so that's all good now. Um, but I put it on. I just put a couple of pictures on Instagram, and Julian came by, and he's like, "Hey, shouldn't this be wireless?" And I'm like, 
yes, it should, but it's not. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, I was like, yeah, it doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi yet, but supposedly it's going to. And then somebody came by the Instagram post and said, oh, I have Wi-Fi working on mine. And I'm like, it wasn't one of you guys. So I, don't, I was like, well, okay, maybe somebody hacked it or something, but it, I, don't, right, I don't know. If, if he got Wi-Fi working and, mm -hmm. and then literally the only way he got Wi-Fi working is, is if he's in the Linux backend and he was able to go through the whole uh you know, the whole setup of, of the Wi-Fi right. uh, through Linux. Uh, but there's n literally nothing you can do within this radio on the interface here that would allow you to enable any Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or even use the SD card. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like, why is the SD card even there? And then oh, the firmware came out. Okay, right. yeah. So, so okay, that was the other thing I was going to talk about was the fact that I, when I updated my firmware, I was told that this port right here, see if I can get that to focus or not, uh, this port right here, this host port, was for firmware, and this port, this dev port, is where you connect to your computer to do WSJTX, and that port does work. I've d done w right. WSJTX, that's the video that I have on my channel, does that, but this host port right here, what the heck is this for? Because when I did my firmware update, I used a micro SD card, I, so, I imaged it with the program that comes in the zip file from Radioddy. I sure. just flashed the S micro SD card, put it in the radio, booted the radio. It came up with this prompt. It said, do you want to update? Click yes. Good. It takes, I don't know, five or six minutes, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, see, that my, my capture card did that again. And then it comes back and it says, and then and then you have to do the baseband update, which is just a, a reboot, click of a button, and you're done. Yeah. Um, so, which is really easy. But, but so what have you guys used this, uh, this second port for here, if anything? So, that's where your keyboard and your mouse go. So, yeah, I mean, you can use your keyboard okay. and mouse. And the thing about it is, is if you read the manual, uh, mm -hmm. there's really no mention of uh, keyboard shortcuts in there. So getting okay. into Linux, getting into Linux and uh, killing that program that, that runs this graphical interface right here, mm -hmm. it actually worked out really well because when we restart it, we could see everything that's occurring. So what you do is you plug in a keyboard and you go through and you hit all the buttons and you can find out which buttons are in charge of what buttons on the radio here. Hmm. So like now we know that F1, uh, I don't remember offhand, F1 goes to radio settings, right? F2 goes to radio settings two, F3 display settings and so forth. Right. But there was no indication in the manual too. So we're almost kind of like starting to document those things as well. Okay. All um, Easter eggs. But the cool thing right. about that yeah. is, I, I'm going to show the box to you. The cool thing about that is, is like, there's these, like, you can make these little like Arduino based boxes. I love this. The thing. FT8 off secret weapon. The, I use this for everything. <laughs> yeah. But basically okay. I could, I, this is an Arduino in here. So I could program it to all the keyboard shortcuts because the, the keyboard is literally not just the F buttons. Then you have like one that's like control F. Right. And uh, one that's, uh, do you use the arrows? I don't remember, but they're all mm -hmm. over the keyboard and it's inconvenient. So it's kind of nice just to have them all in one place. Right. So mm -hmm. that's like another thing you could do and put in a dev box there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we were all under the impression that the, the firmware was going to be updated via the dev port, uh, which yeah. made us assume, and I guess we made a bad assumption that the SD card would be for things like recordings and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Voice recordings. Yeah. Right. That that's all works great. without the SD card. It, yeah. it works without the SD card. Okay. So I haven't tried the voice yeah. recording thing yet. I haven't tried that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this so thing the, has an internal storage. Uh, mine is 16 gigs. And 16 I think, gigs. I think okay. Somebody's was like seven or something like that, or, oh. or it just wasn't formatted right. I don't know what was going on there, but it stores it on the internal card. And so if you're familiar mm -hmm. with single board computers, the internal mm -hmm. device is an MMC. Mm -hmm. um, and then the external device is an SD card. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes, yeah, that makes sense. It's, um, that's like a, um, well, isn't MMC the name of the new kind of SSD hard drive that's in laptops now? The really thin laptops? That's uh, NVMe. Yeah, MMC is just a, like a, what would you call it? A, di a direction to the drive in, okay. in Linux that you're, okay. you're trying to get to, right? That's okay. a, a naming get, convention get, for the... I get the my drive. acronyms mi mixed up, but I got, a, I got a little thin itty bitty hard drive for my laptop that's a one gigabyte drive. And it's not a, sure. it's not a standard SSD hard drive mm. i thought it was called mmc but maybe not mm so yeah, something yeah maybe yeah maybe mm maybe that's what it is something MMC. along those okay. lines i know what you're talking about so well but, the cool know, thing now correct me if i'm wrong okay so the coolest thing i've found about this i know you guys are hacking it and that's all if you're into that kind of thing which i'm not really interested in hacking mine although to i have a question for you because i heard you say something in one of your videos the other day i want to i want to confirm that and make sure i didn't misunderstand it but the cool thing about this radio okay it's not the qual I just want to be very clear here. It's not the quality of a 705 as far as the receive capability and it's maybe not, not even the, either. 
Right, yeah, and maybe not even the transmit audio, okay? But it's half the price, and it has an internal um, tuner. And it has, and unlike the G90 and unlike the X51 and 5, its two predecessors, it has an internal sound card. Okay, so mm -hmm. you can basically do everything tuner wise, antenna tuner wise with this radio. You can do everything um, um, sound card, WSJTX, FT8 wise with this radio. And you can, and it's got one cable, I think, just the single cable to, tr to, um, to connect it to the X125B amplifier. To mm -hmm. push uh, to push about ninety to one hundred and ten watts, depending on how you drive it. Um, so it's got it's it's more of a radio. It's more of a all inclusive radio than what we've seen so far. Than than the seven hundred five is because it has an internal tuner. It's not. I'm not telling you to sell your seven hundred five and buy this. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> it's just I, I my 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 theory is buy both of them. Just get all the radios. So that's Everyone, all, that's yeah. that's what I always say, but um, and Jason's credit card number is that's right exactly yeah right. But so it's, which it's one just, will do more power? The seven hundred five or they're the, the same? Uh, the they're same. the same. They're both they're both yep. five watts on internal battery and ten watts on external okay. battery. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's one good thing about it. And I, I didn't know it was ten watts on external battery until I watched Sean's video because I'm thinking X fifty one hundred five, which is five watt unless I'm mistaken on this, which is five watts every day. It's, you can't get 10 watts out of the 5105, I don't think, with an Correct. external battery. Uh, it's air, internal battery only. So I'm like, oh, okay, it's, so it's five watts. And of course, the G90 is 20 watts, and it does not have an internal battery, so you always have to use the external battery. But this one would do five on internal, 10 on external. And I, I thought that was, that was a good marriage of the two predecessor radios and the yeah. same exact power settings as the 705. So I thought that was... I thought that was pretty pretty cool. And but. and I think that actually is a pretty good time to talk about the one point with the external power source. Uh, yeah. You you get a little external uh, power adapter with this radio. Yes. Uh, but you, you're not going to get 10 watts out of that. That's still only going to do five. So if you want to yeah. run uh, 10 watts, you have to have, you know, 13.8 volts DC. 13.7 will work, as you can see I have on here. Uh, but right. the power brick that they give you is only... I, I don't remember. Is it like eight volts or something to you? Yeah, it's a it's a cell phone charger. It's just meant to charge yeah, the battery volt, and nothing yeah. else. And that's all it'll do. So okay. you're not going to get 10 watts out with that. So don't expect that. Uh, you know, you can use a BioNO or, uh, yeah. or, you know, an external power supply. Okay. But that's important to know, too, because if you plug it in and you're expecting, oh, I'm going to get 10 watts, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's going to be a letdown. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Uh, one right. other thing we discovered, actually, um, if you... It's advertised as 2.5 watts on AM. Now, I know a lot of people don't use AM or whatever, but it mm -hmm. still is interesting. Uh, all my tests I've conducted on every band show 10 watts on AM. So, really? 10, uh, watts on, yeah. 10 watts on on uh, on uh, dead key or 10 watts on modulation? 10 watts on dead key. Really? Yeah. Nice. And, uh, you know, they advertise 2.5. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, first I thought it was maybe something that had happened in the hacks. Uh, so I mm -hmm. referred it back to the default firmware mm -hmm. and it's still giving me 10 Watts. So, hmm. uh, you know, that is kind of interesting. It, it maybe shows that there's something they didn't code correctly, which may also mean that there might be something to code in the future to maybe open it up a little bit more, hmm. but we don't know yeah. that for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's all about heat management at that point. It right. is. And this thing can right. get hot. It, it, can get hot um which might be one of the the downfalls right now i'm holding the back of this thing if i were to take uh well i got one right here a thermostat and hit it on the back where the battery is because it's charging it's probably going to be about 102 degrees fahrenheit wow which i don't yeah let's see here i have not i have not had it now i've only done ft8 with mine i haven't even there plugged it in. is yeah i haven't wow. even plugged in the That's microphone hot. i haven't even plugged in the microphone but i want to take this i'm going to do some poto with this but i'm going to take my I'm going to take my amplifier because I, I, I hate QRP. I, I do. I understand you soda guys like QRP. And if you're doing soda, I think QRP is wonderful. I really do. Sure. But sure. if you live down in the valley down here where I live, I just, I just, I'm not a big QRP guy, especially down going down to the beach where you're literally at zero feet above sea level. I um, thought I was picking up on a valley accent from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I want to try Poto QRP. Mike's done it a bunch. He's got magical poda juice that I don't have. Um, but there's some I'm, tricks to it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, well, yeah, just spot yourself on the website. That's the that's the trick. It is. But, um, <laughs> there's another one. Yeah. 
I, well, I there is did. there is another one. There, yeah, you're right. There is another one. There's another one I use that I've I've found very successful. Um, but at the same time, I still want to try. I, well, I want to do a video with the amplifier just to do it, just to say, hey, here's it working with the amplifier. Uh, but I but I'll probably do the poto with the amplifier too. So just because it's you know even if it's only eighty or ninety watts, it's still still pretty good. Um, the amplifier has a handle on it. It that must mean it's portable. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, the amplifier is balance. portable. All all the all the all the cables and battery external battery you have to bring with it. It's not so portable. But <laughs> right, my RV yeah. deep cycle marine battery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. You know, and I have taken this on a couple of potas, and mm -hmm. the first one, things didn't sound quite right, and they mm -hmm. sounded better the second time. Uh, I am not able to confirm this. I should be able this week to confirm it, but okay. I was in 36 degree weather the first time when everything sounded like really, really off. In fact, mm -hmm. I was down 10 mm -hmm. kilohertz as far as my frequency goes, um, or I was off 10 kilohertz, and uh, eventually when I brought it back home, it was still off. I did a factory reset, and it went back to normal. Mm -hmm. And I just can't help but think that 36 degrees might have actually been too cold for it. So this week's mm -hmm. supposed to be cold again, and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to test it and see try if I can again. maybe try mm -hmm. to replicate it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, we're talking about some of the the flaws and bugs and kind of weird things we mm -hmm. we're we're observing with this, and this is a, that's one of them. That mm -hmm. kind of goes to another thing too, if if you don't mind. Uh, go ahead. Now, now you have all listened on the receive here, and and how do you guys think it sounds on the receive? Because I think it sounds okay until you enable that. Uh, that noise reduction and even with the noise reduction depth of zero it gets this like really wavy tone to it like mm -hmm. the voice sounds like uh fluttering is a good word for it right i could probably give you a demonstration here in a second go ahead yeah you know honestly oh, yeah. i have not used this on voice yet i've only used it on ft8 and and the reason i wanted to, well two reasons number one i wanted to use it on ft8 josh said something cool in the chat a second ago. i'm gonna get to it in a minute um i've used it on ft8 because number one that's what a lot of people want to do. And and FT8 is fun with QRP. It really is. That's that's the only way I have fun with QRP, unless I'm on a mountain. Uh, uh, you go out with K6RK and you have fun with QRP. Otherwise, the only way to have fun <laughs> is FT8, in my opinion. Um, but at the same time, you know, internal internal sound card, internal tuner, which the 705 doesn't have, uh, and internal sound card, which the two predecessors from Zygu doesn't have. So I wanted to do that. But I haven't actually used it on sideband yet, so I'd be interested to hear what you have to say, Sean. Okay, um, right now we're on. Well, I saw somebody on there. Let's just. I'm going to turn this on. If it's too loud, let me know. All right. Uh, here we'll go over here to bigger soon. That's that Good. sounds okay goes, now. Goes away now, right? Okay, so we're not enabled. Now it sounds fine. No, it doesn't. I can hear a little bit of wavering. You hear what I'm talking about? It's there? not coming and through the camera 100%, but I hear I I hear what you're talking about. I don't know if anybody on YouTube can, but yeah. It's like a pulsing or a a rapidly vibrating uh, change of his tone in his voice. Like we can right. understand what's being said, but that's not accurate. And that's at 0 for the noise reduction. Okay. So that's with the noise reduction on. You take the noise reduction off, it actually sounds fine. Uh, that's not to be it, but. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, that's like one thing that I, I'm assuming it's something to do with their algorithm and how they do the noise reduction that they're going to have to change. I have noticed um, it doesn't always happen. And I'm picking up that when it does happen, it's usually when other people are using digital signal processing uh, or mm -hmm. some kind of like. Uh, signal processing when they're transmitting because i heard a guy tonight talking about it and he sounded horrible <laughs> um, okay so i don't i don't know that's way beyond my pay grade yeah um, yeah but i suspect that it has something to mm -hmm. do with it um, so so josh is saying in the chat now this is a conversation i had with him a while ago because um he had one of the first ones and he had a he had a um uh, a pre-production model and then, uh, and then he, I think he, I don't know if he has a production model yet or not, but anyway, so, so I watched his video on connecting to WS JTX and using FT8. And he said that when you plug in the radio, it comes up with two COM ports and windows device manager. And to use the, um, I think he said to second use one. the higher number, the second one. And I have always, always, always with every computer I've ever used with my 705, my 7300, with my FTDX 10, um, 
and a couple other older radios when I use like a like a um, signal link, um, I've always used the lower number. And I'm like, oh, the higher number. Okay, all right, cool. I could not get mine to work with the higher number at all. It worked with the lower number, which is the opposite of what Josh said. And then now, and just then, just now in the chat, he said that his he's measured his on AM, and he's getting two point five watts, the advertised um, what output on AM dead key. So his so his question was the same as mine. He's like, I wonder if there are there's a diff because he got his from HRO. So you guys both got yours from Radiotity, is that correct? No, I got mine no, from HRO. No, mine's from HRO. Oh, yours are both from HRO. Okay. I got this correct. one I got from Radiotity. And okay. when and when I started discussing all the differences between this one and Josh's, I, he's like, I wonder if there's a difference. And I'm like, man, it sounds like but if you guys got yours from HRO also, then Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. Okay. So that makes it even more weird. <laughs> but you know, it that's does. just just uh that's just Chinese quality control is all that is. So it could uh, be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So that okay, Josh is. I, I'm not. I thought I had the answer for you, but I don't because these guys got searched from intro too. So I don't. I, I have no clue. So, so Jegu, I saw their factory tour video. Are they like a six person company or something like that? They're really small. I don't know. It's a good question. They they they. they it was a very small and uh, I guess an amateur like operation, which you know they're doing a lot. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. It's just um, yeah. maybe this wasn't quite ready to be, you know, set out to mass production yet. It's almost like I kind of feel like maybe they used us for guinea pigs, which I'm fine with because I was very well aware going into this that we were going to get a unit that was probably going to be, what did everybody say? The G-Sock? Right. G-Sock yeah, well, 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, but uh, yeah, they, they're, yeah. they're a very small company, it appears, and uh, hmm. they're doing a lot for it, but, or, you know, for what they, they have to work with. But um, still, there's just a lot of bugs. Now, one thing that mm -hmm. TO cannot replicate, uh, if I go down to 160 and I tune it, this thing is slow as molasses. Mm. Um, you can't replicate that TO, can you? I No. Um, sometimes it seems slow. Sometimes it doesn't. Let me try it right now. I'd be kind of curious. Oh. I, I go to, I'll go down there. I'll turn my volume up if you want, because it's the only way you'll do it. Here, I'll, I'll hit it, and I, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it. I'm going to crank my gain up real quick. Go ahead. That's not the right button. I'm reading some of the chat here. So Josh yeah. says his came from Radiotity. I swear you told me your ca yours came from HRO. But if yours came from Radiotity, the, these, that's even more weird because mine doesn't act like yours. Uh, it, it, Don says it is a G-Sock. No, it is not. Cause the G-Sock is not a radio. It is a remote control for a radio. Uh, so it looks like a G-Sock screen inside of an actual QRP transmitting radio. Yeah. Um, now they're running a lot of the same code internally yeah, on this radio. Right. I still haven't finished tuning 160. There it goes. Done. Mine, mine just finished too. And you yeah, see it so didn't even slow. fluctuate the so, whole time. Okay. And it sounds like it's just not having, it almost like doesn't have enough power to continue to, to, to tune it down there, which is interesting because it'll do it fine on like 40 meters, right? Hmm. Um, well, and if you unplug the USB-C, it. it goes a little bit quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's funny but not not every tuner tunes every antenna as the same no. i mean there's l match no. tuners pi network tuners right. t match right. tuners mm -hmm. and so i've been able to replicate that on three different antenna systems too so mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure it's not you know hey you're running a fan dipole made for 40 meters trying to tune 160 mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and, and the reason i tell you that is is if you're looking to buy the g90 over the uh, X6100 or you're looking for advice, just be aware that there might be um, a lesser tuner in here. You know, uh, Shegu, Zaiku is known for their awesome ability yes. to tune tune a wet noodle. Yes. And all of a sudden you get this one in here and it may not be quite as good as the G90 or even I, the 5105. I'm enjoying that in the G90 right now. I could just oh. take almost anything and yeah. hit tune and it goes mm -hmm. um there was mm -hmm. a kind of a question here in the chat more of a comment i'm going to turn it to a question um what when you're uh, hacking this what type of language are you using is it mostly python or are you using uh some other type of languages this is just straight linux right now i haven't done anything outside of that the mm -hmm. the coding changes for the open transmit and the power modification was just done in a hex editor we just edited the code right. that they already had mm -hmm. which would have been like objective c or c plus yeah C++, right? 
Yeah. I mean, like ultimately, no. it's disassembled language, but uh, if it's C sharp um, on there, oh, or dot, dot no. net, I don't think it. I, I, way, I maybe it. misheard you. It's probably C plus plus or C. I don't think it will be objective C. You're, um, you're right. You're correct. It's not. You know, another thing I did. Uh, this is stupid, but um, uh, you know, you could actually, if you wanted to, because web the web server was enabled by default on this thing. So I, I made <laughs> yeah. a I made a website for my radio. You nice. Know, but really, uh, let's talk Geo about cities. Yeah. <laughs> Cam radio dudes x6100 and i was basically trying to find a way to pull the frequency information and everything which is we're probably a long way from that but uh ultimately wouldn't it be cool to be able to log into the the website because the web server is enabled and control via password protection control your radio yes you know and that's kind of yes what type of thought real, real, well, no, real you time can't have controlling. passwords uh uh-uh. no nothing encrypted in ham radio sorry no password. no that's over digital no, i was We're gonna say that's not a about... transmission yeah. yeah i know you're making no. a joke to you and i understand that and yeah. it's funny I, but uh but yeah you can later. you can have an encrypted web server in ham radio it's okay <laughs> so but yeah uh uh that is that's fun if you can that's almost like a built-in uh uh, whatever the ICOM software is called, or like a built-in smart SDR for flex radio to the to the radio where you can just have the radio plugged in the Ethernet or Wi-Fi if they ever enable it. I, I would still plug mine in the Ethernet if it was at home and then log into it from a web browser when you're out remote and control your radio and, and work uh, remotely. That'd be kind of fun. It'd be fun just to do, just to just to do it. I do that with my flex radio all the time. I work uh, so, remote remote ham radio all the time, or not? While we're talking about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, yeah. you'll you'll notice that your case is all metal. Yes. So yeah. where's the Wi-Fi signal coming from? If you look underneath your antenna on that side of the radio, there is what appears to be a black sticker. Right. Uh, underneath that screw. Underneath here, like down here. No, right underneath the antenna port. You had it on the right view. Oh, okay. See that that raised black plastic bump towards right the here. Or this one up, up above up above your this thumb. here there right you go right there, there. right that, there that okay. is a, that's a sticker and if you push on it it's kind of spongy because okay. the metal has been removed from there and yeah. behind that are two little ceramic surface mount antennas for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi so if you want to get better Wi-Fi reception point that towards your Wi-Fi router oh. that's where your Wi-Fi <laughs> antenna is is right behind that sticker now can you does it have like a port on it where you can put an external antenna no they're no? surface okay. mounts solder oh antennas okay. and you can desolder them and, and put your own antenna on we're hams we can do that sure yeah interesting you know you were saying about the about the bugs in it um and somebody said in the chat a minute ago he's like uh what did he say uh mike miles says mine is going back to radio tomorrow it's not worth the hassle um sure you know sure. i think i think if radio or zygu really I'm going to call it Zorro because Shagu. I can't bring myself to say Shagu, but um, but Josh says it right because his his wife is Chinese, so he knows how to say all this stuff. I, I'm just going to call it Zorro. Um, I think if you were to put this out to the ham community and say, "Hey, this isn't ready yet," yeah, but we're going to put it out to you. We want you guys to beta test it and just hack the heck out of it. Who's interested? I think you'd have the ham community would be like, me, 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 me. <laughs> I think you'd sure. have a lot and, of people hop up for T, it. So. T and I, we had that discussion yesterday, right? Okay, T-O? okay. And uh, yeah. we were saying like, okay, so what would you do to market it, right? T.O., like, right. hey, uh, this this is, we're just selling you this kit and uh, we're going to yeah. give you a little bit of code and kind of like the rig expert zero. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. We're going to give you a little bit of code and the rest is on you to discover what you could do with it. And uh, then, you know, go to town and leave yeah. it open source. Uh, what would the price range be? What would a fair price range be? And You know, I still think the price is right for that kind of radio. I don't, you know, I, we were talking about this too. on Hayden Stream. We've talked about this a couple of times before. What is the competitor? What is the direct competitor of this radio? I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it's a great radio or a bad radio. There just mm-hmm. isn't right, anything right. else right. that's like so, this. The right, 5105 Superhead, the... 891 is 100 watt, no tuner, no waterfall. Mm-hmm. The 6100 has got the tuner, the waterfall, the SDR. The mm-hmm. KX2 is twice the price. The 705 does shack in a box is also twice the price. This is kind of in its own category. Yes. If they would have sent sent this out as like an open source, 
GPL, yeah. here's the login mm -hmm. and password, plug in your keyboard, mouse and screen and have a blast. I'd have been all over. I would have bought 10 of these because they're yeah. just, they're amazing. I mean, as it stood, I bought three, but. <laughs> um, these, well, you've got, just, you've got daughters with call signs, so. I do, yeah. <laughs> there you go, Don, I gotcha. To further TO's thing about the price is uh, this thing would actually probably, to me, be worth $600 if it was open source, uh, as it is now yeah. with all the bugs and everything. I'm like, would at this moment, at least, so would I, I, would I jump in and pay 600 bucks? Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, you're talking about beta software or be the beta testing the device. Do you feel it's just the hard, I'm sorry, it's just the software that's not quite up to snuff and is having the issues? Or do you feel like there's any hardware issues? Because if you if they nailed the hardware and said, we just don't have the software quite uh, there yeah. yet, then then I, I can totally agree with your point. But if it's if you feel something is mm -hmm. not quite ready in the hardware-wise, I'd be less likely to buy it. I think personally... I think, Frank, I think you're completely correct. Um, I think the hardware is probably Say that there. again so I can hear it. Uh, I, yeah, I, it did come through. Hit rewind. I'm not saying it again. <laughs> um, so I I think the hardware is that You guys let me know if you think if you disagree with me. I think the hardware is there and the firmware and the software is not there. Um, the great thing about that is that it's... Um, I kind of, I kind of had a thought on that while you were talking. I kind of, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I, I think that, uh, I, yeah, I think the hardware's there. I just don't think that the firm, you know, like there's so many different Chinese radios that come out and, uh, and Josh is agreeing with us in the chat. He's like, the price is still right for where it is given the, the features that do work. And I agree with that. I agree. I think that, you know, where else are you going to get a QRP all band, Six through yeah. six through one sixty uh, meter radio. Sure, for six hundred sure. bucks. In this small form. So, and but yes, here's the concern. For six hundred bucks. You guys are absolutely correct. Yeah, and this goes into this goes into the whole thing about the GSOC again. It never got finished, and after what, like a two or three firmware upgrades, they right? Just, they just yeah. abandoned it. Yes, and now it's it's like vaporware, and that's the concern with this. Like, it will still work, but like, okay, there, I, I just replicated that bug too. I hate this. I turn this radio back on and it shows zero volts and there's nothing going on. Right. So yep, I've had my, watch this that. quick fix. Watch this. There you Fixed. go. You have to hold the power in again, but like those little bugs, they become annoyances. Oh, the and little, the, you, did you notice that your, your battery was red yep. out on a red outline showing that it right. was it, it, indicating zero, it was dead. Volts. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was nothing on the, on the display. And so you just tap this or sometimes you have to hold it down for a couple of seconds. Yeah. And oh, excuse me. Those are like little things that, yeah, I mean, the radio will still work. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me Dude, wrong. Dude, you just radio bumped your radio work. and apologized to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't apologizing to the radio. I was apologizing to, to you guys at home. The radio will still work just fine, but um, you know that's it's those minor bugs. And if yeah. and if they're not going to fix it, then then it's kind of like yeah. But yeah, I mean, still it's it's going to work as a radio. I've uh -huh. taken it on multiple POTA activations now, and it's it's worked great. I've activated Good. with it multiple times. Actually, uh, another buddy of mine activated with it as well. So Good. it's getting used and it works. Uh, there's no problem there. Yeah, so it's got a little tiny speaker in it, so mm -hmm. the audio quality is mm -hmm. not that good. When yeah. I plugged headphones into mine, I was getting a buzz through my headphones. Hmm. So there's things like that. But again, it's such a small radio. I wouldn't expect high fidelity right. audio out of the, the tiny little package that this thing is. And I don't know how the 5105 speaker compares, but I think that one's even smaller than this one. I believe so. I believe so, yeah. I I, you know, when, I, before the firmware update that I just did, the, I thought the speaker was incredibly loud. Of course, yeah. you couldn't adjust it because volumes like one through five or six are the same. But I was like, man, that thing is freaking loud, which is not a bad <laughs> problem to have. But now I turn mine on and now mine's at zero right now. And now it's at 10. And get, let me switch that screen. Now it's at 10 and you still can't hear it. It's coming in a little bit. And, and it was louder than that before the firmware update that I just did. I mean, like, sure. like, like volumes one and two were hella loud and I'm like, that's great, but you need to have, you need to have a constant, right? You need to have a very quiet setting. And you, if you turn it up, you need to have a very loud setting. That was one of the complaints about the, uh, the FT 3d from, from Yezu and that people loved about the Anytone radio, the Anytone 878 radios had very loud speakers, very good volume. And the Yezu radios didn't, for twice the price, didn't have that great. And then the Yezu FT5 came out and everybody was like, oh, and now it's got a one watt speaker. And now it's very loud or you can turn it so, up to very loud. So I think that's so important with, with, with any radio that has an internal speaker. 
Yeah. Here's the question that, that we're asking, and, and Vern had asked this in the chat also, is it worth it for a person that doesn't know how to tinker with it and get the bugs out? And so if you want a radio that does everything that this thing is su supposed to do, everything it says it's supposed to do, mm -hmm. then you're looking at $1,200 because that's the 705. The, the 705 right. has a polished user interface. Correct. It has good support. It has good documentation. Mm -hmm. It's got two different manuals to it. it Wi-Fi and Bluetooth works. Mm -hmm. It's twice the price. Mm -hmm. I'm not upset at the mm -mm. at the situation mm -mm. once i found out that wi-fi and bluetooth were really in the box mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they can get a firmware update out that'll handle it in in january and it'll be fine mm -hmm. um i think my problems with wi-fi are that my my wi-fi ports over here and my wi-fi routers over there and they're on opposite sides of the house and so it's probably just not enough signal strength to get out of this little box with these it, little it, tiny yeah. antennas and, and i will say to you to to justify what you've just said yeah i have run consistent pings on on this device and from mm -hmm. this device out to, you know, 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8, uh, Google mm -hmm. DNS server. And yes. I, I do have little packet loss, you know, so I think you might be onto something. So my router is downstairs right below me. Um, so that might be something that maybe you're just not getting the distance because, and it is a metal case, right? But mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you're probably onto something there for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to put an external antenna on it. I just don't, I'm not ready to, to take a second soldering iron to the radio. Yeah, and and I'll I'll say this also about your about the seven hundred five comment because uh, uh, Carlos is in the chat saying a thousand you can get a thousand dollar refurbished seven hundred five. The biggest mm -hmm. complaint that I now I I have a seven hundred five. I love my seven hundred five. I would not trade my seven hundred five for this radio, but I I have a sickness. I just buy new radios that I don't need. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest complaint about the seven and antennas and that I can't build. Um, the biggest complaint about the 705, legit, I'm not joking here. The biggest complaint that I ever heard about the 705 is no inter internal tuner. Mm -hmm. This has an internal tuner. And if it's like the previous Zygu model internal tuners, it's a kick-ass tuner. Now, maybe we haven't got there yet, like like uh, we, Steve was saying a minute ago. Or, yeah, we talked about but, it already. The internal tuner on like a G90 is a 10 to 1, whereas this is a 4 and 0.5 to 1 tuner. You know so what? It's, and it's I think I, th less. I think 10 to 1 tuners are great, but really, what are you trying to tune with a 10? Are you trying to tune like your sock after you step in a puddle with it? I, I don't get, you know, get a freaking antenna that actually works, you <laughs> right, know? Right, right. And right. if it's a little bit off, then a 4 to 1 will tune it just fine. Um, and if it's, if it's, if it's actually, if you actually need a 10 to one tuner to tune your antenna, guess what guys, you're not getting out of be that with, with right? five or 10 Watts, you're not going anywhere. You're going to be, be able to talk across the parking lot. Maybe. So it's just, you know, I, that's great that it has a 10 to one tuner and it's fun to use. I guess if you want to tune up like your gutter or a deer stand, we've done that before. Um, but I don't know. It's just, if you're talking about efficiency, it's just not there with a 10 to one. If, if you actually need a 10 to one tuner. But that's just right. me, you know, so I, I don't know. But that, I put the Pac-10 Infed Halfwave on this, and I hit the tuner, and it went, and of course, that, yep. that one's pretty resonant on several bands anyway. And I was making FT8 contacts on 5 watts all over the country, and I plugged in the external battery and got to 10 watts, and I was making a few more contacts, but, you know, I mean, it was just, it was a beautiful, beautiful matchup between the Pac-10 Infed Halfwave and this radio. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I get that. And, yeah. uh, but the, you know, I guess, well, you're right. I mean, I guess, uh, you know, we're trying to be like, oh, well, this feature didn't happen. We didn't get this feature. We didn't get that feature. And the fact yeah. of the matter is, there's still a tuner in there. <laughs> True. Uh, the, True. The 891 yes. also doesn't have a tuner. The 891 right. will do. I mean, it's kind of unfair to compare both of those, but. Um, <laughs> And it's an unfair you know, comparison. You get quite a bit. Right. Uh, as long as you know, again, some of the things that you might be working with. I, I'll give you another example here. If, if you don't mind. Yeah, go um, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you know, I like, I like to keep this at 2,700 when I'm on side or 2,400 when I'm on sideband. Right. And so I yes. change it to 2,400. I close this out. Uh, I shut this off and I turn it back on and it defaults back. So there's a lot of stuff in this radio uh, that will default okay. back to uh, whatever it was before you, you know, before you changed it. Uh, so you need to be mindful of those things. Uh, another thing that I want to mention here is, uh, and I'm not trying to not sell you this radio because I think it's going to be great once they fix all this stuff. Uh, there's no band stacks on here. So if I, you know, if I wanted to, you know, like on the Yesu, for example, you have three different band stacks and you can go and have one for 40 meters in lower side band. There, did it again, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, one, for, <laughs> one, for, uh, one for CW and then uh, one for... Uh, digital upper sideband digital mm -hmm. yeah you can't do that so every time you're doing ft8 if i were to switch ft8 on my computer it's going to go to uh, you know 
Uh, it's going to go to the FDA frequency 074, but it's going to keep you in the upper side band mode. So you have to be right. mindful that you have to change it constantly. And there's no band stacking so that you could have like the different options. You know, just keep that in mind as well. But there is the A band, B band. So you could, in theory, just keep your B band on, on you know, digital or whatever. Yeah. Wow. Um, so there's little quirks like that that you uh, continue to. Mm-hmm. I think another one is the power too. So if you have it set to 10 watts mm-hmm. and then you reboot, I don't remember if this is one or not. I hope I don't look. I think crazy. that I think that it does go back to five watts if you set it if you reboot it. Well, yeah. I haven't tried it with this version of firmware, but with the old version, I, I believe that was true. Yeah, and maybe sometimes it takes it some time. This. Yeah, and you, know, you have so to hold the button pause. down to power it on too. You can't just click it. It's going to go through like this boot process, just so you all know. Yeah. This is normal right here. This is the like cursor. It's, yes, it's booting and yeah, Linux and everything. Yeah, that's normal. Um. Right. And then it did, oh no, it made it through that time, but it did go back okay. to five watts. So that's not yeah. fixed either. So there's those little quirks. Not, yeah. not, not a huge deal. It's not an end of all be all for this radio. But, uh, you know, back to what Frank said earlier too, because uh, we kind of got off track. Frank had asked about, is it all software based? And there is a lot of software based stuff mm-hmm. in here that, that could easily be fixed. My main concern with the hardware is, and I've been doing it throughout the episode, is this heat. Now, I guess the only thing I could do is maybe go to Death Valley or Arizona and maybe test it out and see if, because <laughs> if it's getting to a hundred now, of course, that is when it's plugged in. Mm-hmm. Of course, then if you're wanting to use 10 Watts while you're, you're on, so you're still going to have it plugged into something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what the is, heat management doesn't make sense to me because sometimes it's right. super hot for no apparent reason. And sometimes it's super cool when I'm running the pants off of it. Yeah. <laughs> What's my analogy? Hold on. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I, I, that, that might be my my main concern there is uh possibly the the, the amount of heat that this thing produces. didn't the 5105 have a problem with getting hot as well i know that the uh, g90 did if you ran the g90 uh too hard at 20 watts for like a, a few hours it would get hot but and that's why they made that cooling fan rack that that you set it on you mean the finger but, guillotine Yes, that. Yeah. Well, they 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 fixed that now. The newer newer version has a guard underneath it. But yes, that thing. Um, well, I, I, but I guess though, because you you have these stands here, so you have a nice uh, angle to view. You could probably get a fan right here mm-hmm. that'll fit nice, like when you're doing polar or something like that. Yeah, it's just one no more thing to carry case. though. It's one True. more thing to carry. True. True. Yeah. You know, I I, I will say that this. It's not as uh, big as the 705, you know, it weighs almost nearly as much and it's mm-hmm. almost just as wide, but it's not as thick. It fits right. in a bag a lot easier too. So if you're, yes. if you're trying to consume space, like, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but when I go on my little radio adventures, I, I usually just try to pack a small backpack, like a mm-hmm. camera bag mm-hmm. and it's got my camera gear, my radios and my, my clothes. So this would actually fit a little bit better. So there's mm-hmm. a, there's advantages there, but you're not, you're not actually losing too much in, in the, mm-hmm. the sense of weight, right? to you right exactly yeah no i was i was impressed with the size of this thing it was it's more like because i thought the 5105 was very similar in size to a kx3 they are um and this thing is shorter this way maybe a little bit thicker in this way um but overall the overall size and weight of it is probably slightly less maybe not the weight the size is slightly less than a kx3 um, or a 5105, which is what I, what, what I was referring to a 5105. Um, so I was, I was actually expecting when I got this in the mail, I was actually expecting something with a larger screen and a larger form factor. I'm not disappointed that it's smaller. In fact, I, I thought that the fact that it was smaller, I was like, that's actually kind of cool. It's a little bit more portable, a little bit lighter weight, a little bit more backpackable. Um, but it's, di- it's just different. I would expect it. I expected it to be an X5105 with a color screen. And it's not. It's a different size and form factor than that radio. So it's um, it's not that much different though. Um, no, but it's not exactly the pocket. same. Well, <laughs> I guess That's if you if, if you say so, I guess. But <laughs> it's I don't know. I just I just thought it was a little bit different than what I was expecting, but not in a bad way. I I, I looked at it. I was like, you know, I think I like this. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a beautiful screen. It's a beautiful sharp. A uh, very high resolution screen. It's not touch screen, but you don't really want it. I mean, I don't really care about touch screen myself, but it's got, um, I mean, it's got, like I said, it's got, if the 705 had the internal tuner, then if, if Zygu would have released this, other than the fact that it's half the price, people would have been like, so what, what else you got? But <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's definitely a, it's definitely a, it's the best thing to come out of Zygu so far. I'll put it that way. 
I think. Because the it G90 has a lot of potential. Yeah. The G90 is a great radio, but the screen is like the size of a poached stamp. And yeah, you can get a waterfall on it, but you, you know, you gotta cut, put your glasses on to see it. Um, so this one, this one kind of marries the two, the G90 and the 5105 together with a color screen and a waterfall and uh, built-in sound, built-in sound card, which new one of those have. I just, I, and, I thought yeah. the, I thought the, I thought they're, I think, I thought they were moving the right direction. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and you know what? This right now on screen does not do justice because I'm using like a cheap webcam to show you yeah. it. it. It's such a crisp, uh, it really a, is a crisp image on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I do love that. Uh, I don't. You know, I was in the sun one of the days we actually had sun out here when I did my parks on the air, and it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad in the sun trying to look at this Vic thing. Is correct. You know, there are 10 different settings for the brightness, but you could <laughs> pretty much find enough. something. I will say, though, uh, that's another thing. Hopefully, we'll see uh, some corrections on in the future is uh, some people may not like the layout of, of, of the blue waterfall and everything like that because maybe it doesn't uh, actually appease to, to your needs, especially if you're in mm -hmm. like a bright area or something. You want to change the colors mm -hmm. so the contrast is better. And uh, you can't do that. <laughs> so uh, no. there's nowhere there's nowhere to change the color scheme. No. Uh, yeah. Again, I, I know we're not comparing a Yesu FT DX10, but mm. you know, with the DX10, there's one setting there you could actually change the color scheme and the contrast and stuff like that. You can't do that. So there's a very limited features, even though it's a it's it's an amazing, you know, for the most part, an amazing radio or it has amazing potential mm -hmm. rather. A lot of people came by my last video, the, the only video I put up about this so far, and said that the waterfall resolution was really slow. So if you actually, you can adjust that, can you, you right not? Here. Can you not adjust that? The waterfall like, resolution could yeah. be really fast, but you, and you could you could change that into here. Right. Um, however, there's a big caveat, and that this probably needs to get fixed. If you bring this down here, oh wait, I forgot. Down is up. Yeah. If you bring this up 25k here, and you hit the arrow. This is about as fast as you're going to see the waterfall display at 25k. So it's not um, a lot. It's not a lot faster than. Uh, it needs to go. It needs to go a lot faster. It's a way slower. And so, it's like, slower. if I go back to if I go back mm -hmm. to 100k, I mean, back down to 100k. Uh, look at how that fast is fat. Right? That is fat. You're right. So it's backwards. S they messed it up. Yeah. And yeah. Um, okay. Because there's no way that it should be that slow, especially when it's uh, scanning or or showing and displaying mm -hmm. uh, a a narrower. A, a narrower uh, window of, of spectrum, if you will. Right. Okay. So that's another I think it's, caveat. I think it's counterintuitive, but when you narrow the display down, it's displaying more data in the narrower display. Therefore, it slows the CPU down, is my guess, because mm. well, it is showing uh, way more info. We could run like a we could run a top on the on the back end in, in Linux and see what happens when we do both. That Once yeah, get top uh, installed. Yeah. yeah. That I just oh, yeah. yeah. You don't have top installed on Linux, really? No, no. You don't oh. have Git installed. You don't have top. I mean, this is very, it's very, very bare minimum. Wow. Unless PCI is not installed. Like, can you do? You throw can, a command at this thing, and it's like, what? Can you do IF config? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's okay. Well, at least you can do that. IF config. <laughs> IW config. Yeah. IW yeah. config. Yeah. Okay. Can but I, and I saw that To I saw that you did the the ps kill command, so you can kill processes yeah. in it. You so. can. You could ps aux. Mm -hmm. You could do kill. Uh, okay. And. Um, Okay. Which is a really good thing. Yeah. That's funny that it didn't have uh <laughs> that's funny that it didn't have that, but okay. Uh okay. Well, cool. Well, I mean it's embedded Linux. It's not it's not um Oh, interesting. You know, Josh. it's not desktop Linux. Well, no, of course not. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. What um, Josh had a Josh had a really good uh comment mm -hmm. and uh a high to crash course. He says colorblind folks don't uh, care for the color layout of the 6100 from the comments he's been receiving. Ah, and I haven't had actually, that comment yet. That's a great uh, piece yeah. of input too, mm -hmm. because sometimes mm -hmm. we tend to forget about, you know, people who might be colorblind mm -hmm. or, or whatnot. So that's actually really good to know. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't got that comment. The, the only comment I've got is that, is that, wow, the resolution is really slow. And I'm like, dude, you can adjust that. Just like, like I have my resolution on my, on my maestro set very slow. Cause I don't like it. Like, like scrolling through there, like 90 to nothing. I don't like that. I'm like, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird. It makes me nervous. I see the radio sure. moving fast and I, I start talking faster in the microphone. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, <laughs> give me a slow, nice, steady waterfall. I want to be calm in my waterfall. Very relaxing in my waterfall. You want that black velvet waterfall. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean, the cool thing about it is it is adjustable on the flex. I mean, it is adjustable. So however you want it, set it accordingly so i knew this one was adjustable because i'd played with the i didn't notice that it was backwards i didn't i didn't notice that part but i right. thought it would go faster than what you just showed but uh, maybe that's something they can also fix in firmware later on i don't know 
it, it's got to be they they might have just messed it up because right now zero is the fastest as we're seeing now and if you go up uh, to 12 or something like that it slows down considerably really and again when we bring it down from 100 to 50 to 25 it slows down even more yeah um, i you know what i'm actually kind of curious uh let's bring this all the way up here real quick all right to the max and then let's bring it down to 25 and see if it, how slow it is 10 is the max my my apologies and then let's bring this over here and bring it down to 25 and hit this. <laughs> it's well, that, that is hella slow. Wow. <laughs> That's like Frank slow. Goodness. No. Oh, I, I wouldn't oh. Be I'm sorry, Frank. I that. forgot you were here. But... <laughs> <laughs> horrible. Horrible. But, um, there, it's finally showing. Um, I am going to duck out, y'all. I'm going to go ahead okay. and get ready for my next stream. Y'all right. have fun, and okay. I'll see you on mine. Take care, cool, man. Buddy. I'll be there. Adios. Yeah. So Frank's, yeah, Frank's stream is listed in the playlist at the top of the chat for those of you who are not here at the beginning of this stream. We've got a playlist tonight. Uh, Charlie went before me. This is my stream. Frank's going next, and then Rhea has a stream after that. So you guys go check that playlist out. Go ahead, Sean. Sorry. No, no, that was it. Sorry. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, you're right. That is That is incredibly slow. So... I guess for people, and the speed that I see yours going at right now through the Zoom window, that's the speed I basically like. I like, I like it at that speed too. Yeah, that's as yeah. fast as it'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I I knew it was adjustable. I hadn't tinkered with it, but um, I would like to see it faster than that just for other people's preferences. But my myself personally, that speed right there is pretty good. I, uh, like I said, I don't want it screaming through there looking like, cause I, I guess I just, I guess my brain works in such a way where I see it moving really fast and I start talking fast in the microphone. And I just, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I can't separate that part of my brain, I guess, but <laughs> whatever. Sure. No, but, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So I, you know, I think I've pretty much hit on every little, little thing that I found if you want to say wrong with it or, or kind of like every quirk with it at the moment, I think yeah. I pretty much did it. Tio, you got anything else? Yeah. There's been a lot of talk on CW modes on this radio where the CW speed setting doesn't seem like it's accurate. Right. And I the CW messages function doesn't work at all. Um, I tried it seven different ways and all seven of them didn't work out. And I put that out in a video the other day. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got a lot of, I've got over a dozen, over two dozen videos on this thing now, just going over different features and different things that we've done with it. I've got a couple of different operating systems to boot on it. I'm trying to get it to boot off of the SD card. They've done some SD card, black magic type stuff. So it's, uh, it's a challenge to get it to boot. Did, That's something I did, was going to ask you, Steve, because I saw, I, I haven't watched all your videos, but I watched two or three of them. And um, I think you said in one of them that, all the hacks and rooting you were doing, you were doing from the SD card. So you could mm -hmm. remove the SD card, reboot the radio to the internal drive, and it was still stock. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. So where do I get the image that you're using on the SD card? So the images are actually really straightforward. If you go to the, the video that I did on using Armbian, yeah, um, there's, a, there's a link to the default Armbian. And then in the description of the video, there's the commands that you would run. So you got to get your serial console working first. Mm -hmm. And then when you turn the radio on, you'll start seeing messages show up on your serial console, hit control C to break out of it. And then I've given you the commands to type in at that point, stick the SD card in, type in those commands and it'll boot your radio. And if anything goes wrong, hold down the power key until it shuts off all the way, pull the SD card out, turn it back on and you're good to go. Okay. Raspberry Pi, it's a it's a stock Raspberry Pi download. And then again, you type in those manual commands. Hmm. I've been able to change the, the bootloader on the internal memory mm -hmm. so that when it boots, it will boot off of the external SD card. But that's, that's real hacky. I don't like that. I'm trying to get a way that I can just give you, like take this image file, burn it in Etcher, Stick it in the radio, turn it on, and you've got you know build a pie from KM4 ECC. That's what I want. Radio. That's what I want. I want a I want a burnable, executable um, image that I can just write to an SD card to a to a micro SD card and make it bootable and put it in the radio and just boot it up to something other than what's in the the, the radio now. That's exactly what I want. I'm lazy, so I'm gonna let you do the work. And when you <laughs> when you get it done, I, I'd like to to feature it on the show. So, so yeah, yeah, it'll because be, it'll be pretty that cool. that would be pretty cool if you could run like an actual Rasbium or something similar to it, and then you could run the apps on the back end, like all mm -hmm. the stuff right. in Build a Pie, like like Jason has in Build a Pie. That would be really fun, I think. I mean, if you were all of a sudden able to run WSJTX on this, right? And 
you 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 have a fully you know FTA in a, in a, in your hand kind of deal. Right, that's a pretty big deal. And hammers, you uh, can so you, you, can, you can even you can even log yourself in hammers because that'll run on Build a Pie. Right. So right. now I can walk with so. an antenna sticking out of my backpack. That's right. Go on a hike with my right. wife, and she won't yell at me for stopping to poda. I'll just poda the whole time I'm on the hike. And and once you get Bluetooth enabled, you just do it all from your from your Android tablet. Just hey, and when you get back to when you get back to the cabin or wherever y'all are staying, you could you could load up some ROMs and play Super Mario. That's Party. right. So yeah, you know yeah. Up. <laughs> did, you, did you notice when I was just tuning this, uh, or I was doing an SWR scan, and, and other people have have mentioned this as well? Hook it up to a power meter when you get a chance, but uh, when you do an SWR scan, it puts out almost five watts. Um, no, I haven't done so an SWR mine. Scan does not do that. Yours does not it do says that. five watts, but check it out on an actual external power meter. It doesn't even okay. move the needle. Okay, cool. somebody asked me about that. But hmm. every radio, every radio, every antenna analyzer, when you analyze an antenna, transmits where you're analyzing. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, that's not unique to this radio. It's every radio will do that. Even the 705, when you run its SWR sweep, will TX out of band. I'm not like talking about zero point out of band. No, I'm talking he... about it's putting out five watts when you are transmitting. Right. Like when, when you're doing a scan, it'll do five watts of power. Let me check something. I don't or have everything two and a half set up. Yeah, that's what I understood you to say, Sean. You were like, you okay. know, on a hundred watt radio, if you put it into tune mode, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna tune it like five maybe ten watts, but that's on a hundred watt radio. Oh, wow. So maybe on a five yeah. watt radio, it should be tuning at one watt. I yeah, think I, it actually, should be I did like, just check that. It's it's in the. You're right. I was thinking something else. Hmm. Yeah, and so the whole thing about the SWR scanning at if it's doing such a large scan, even out of band is okay. You're right, but mm-hmm. at five watts, it's scanning for an excessive amount of time, and right. it could hit high points. You actually could potentially potentially damage your radio especially if you let it continue to scan because you walk away and forget that it's scanning um, <laughs> you know just throwing it out there uh, huh. yeah so i just i've got the xpa 125b plugged in right now uh-huh. and i set the radio down to 0.1 watts and i hit the swr scan and it's tripping the the power meter the, the power circuit breaker on the amp saying no stop no stop stop, stop. oh yeah, wow point one watts and I'm, I'm i'm doing amplified tuning that's oh, hilarious oh my gosh yeah, yeah so. that needs that needs to be corrected obviously <laughs> a little Sheesh. bit uh, yeah just a little bit but anyway that's just another quirk okay. we found here so <laughs> sean you said you did oh, a poda with this tuning i've done a few of backwards them. yeah okay I've, I've done a couple of them and uh yeah i really enjoyed it how did how did fun. you did you were you able to work pileups with it yeah, I did fine with them. Okay. Um, there, I'll be honest with you. The first time I was having that weird uh, wobbling issue, and then yes. when I realized it's noise reduction. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second poda I did, I just didn't turn on my noise reduction, which was kind of unfortunate because it does really help bring out some stations. Yeah. And I did lose a couple of stations that were like park to park uh, mm. because they have a, usually a, a little fainted signal, especially mm-hmm. if they're in a park. And uh, I just wasn't able to make them out. Now, I assume if I would have been able to turn noise reduction on, I probably would have maybe heard them a little bit better, but I was able to work pileups. There wasn't any problem with that. Okay. However, there is one more, uh, another caveat to this radio, and this is probably software based again, but uh, just be aware that if you're transmitting and your microphone and you let go, uh, there is a delay in the programming. And so as you let go, your radio is still actually transmitting and it will transmit the on key of your mic. So it sounds like a spring loaded, uh, Motorola's used to sound like that, right? Yeah, you know, the old Motorola's uh, used to sound like that. When you would unkey yeah. the mic, you could actually hear it over the radio. Mm-hmm. It's um, a Roger it's beep. Very pronounced <laughs> on here. Roger and beep. It, it happens on the push to talk on here as well. So I think that was the only thing. Uh, I was getting decent audio reports the second day. The first day where it was 36 degrees, they were saying that my audio sounded really weird and distorted. Hmm. Um, I used the ICOM on the same antenna system and everything was fine. Mm-hmm. Again, not comparing, just saying that I tried sure. different radios to eliminate RFI and everything along those lines. I was using a counterpoise. Um, so there was something there. And, uh, you know, that was the same day the frequency went t- 10 kilohertz off. Could it be a freak accident? It could be. You know, hmm. the, the fact re- reset and bringing it into warmer weather helped out a little bit. So, yeah, I had no problem working pileups the second day. And in fact, the other guy who used the radio, who's new ham, he got on there and he was using it like it was no problem. So, hmm. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it was good. Good. Okay. Well, overall, you know, I think that this radio, uh, I think it, you know, like you were saying, Steve, I think it fills a niche that was mm-hmm. unfulfilled before, you know, at the price yep, point right. it does with the features it has. Yeah, it's not and, and like I said, I think Zygood should next time they come out with a new model, I think they should just say, "Hey, 
Y'all want us to release this early? Who wants to beta test this for us? I think you'd have it's a lot of people in the ham radio community stepping up and just saying, reach yeah. out to me. I got you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I think if anything, I, they probably, if they've seen, if they know what the internet is, they probably seen some of our videos and, and maybe that'll give us a, a little bit. Oh, of they've a, seen them. <clears throat> what's the maybe. word? Maybe, maybe they'll want to come to us next time. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. But still, I'll, I'll buy it anyway. So it doesn't yeah. Matter. Yeah. So, so that SWR scan thing, dude, it was the tuner. The tuner puts out a very low amount of power. The SWR scan is what puts out the high power. So I was talking about, I was talking about something okay. backwards. Okay. Yeah. The tuner does made a do mistake. accurate or the tuner does accurately. Yes, you're right. That is correct. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad you're able to confirm though, that that would be a bug. And that actually had occurred with the uh, G90 as well. And I think they fixed it mm. after a few firmwares or something along those lines. That's interesting to know. I didn't remember that on the, my G90, but okay, good. Now, now I don't remember it either because I didn't get the G90 till much later. But um, I had yeah. po- like a few comments about it and stuff like that. And, okay. All in, right. in all fairness. All right. So yeah, 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 definitely. Well, yeah. hey guys, thanks a lot. I mean, we got four minutes until the top of the hour where we're gonna switch over to Frank's uh, stream. You guys in the chat, be sure and check the link I put at the top of the chat. Frank's gonna s- live stream. At 8 o'clock uh, Texas time, about four minutes from now for his one-year anniversary. A couple of us are going to be over there with him. Uh, but hey, Steve and Sean, thanks a lot, man, because I've been watching. Uh, I haven't watched all your videos, like I said. I've been kind of, I've been following your titles. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I was <laughs> like, oh, he's doing this. Oh, he's doing this. Oh, he's doing And I've watched two or three. Sean, you had a really good video about how to set up WSJTX. I thought that was really good. Uh, Josh did a v- really good video about that, although a couple of the things he did didn't work with mine. But I think that's because not that Josh was wrong. I think that's just because there's different. I th- I think there's different versions of the radio out there. They haven't told us that yet. That's just a suspicion I have. But mm-hmm. um, but I think there's different versions of the radio out there because a couple of the things that he said work on his doesn't work on mine and vice versa. But um, in either way, however it goes. But uh, I think that I you know long story short and all this guys, people watching on the chat, people watching on Team Replay, um. If you're okay with tinkering with a radio, I think this is a very good choice at its price point. It's got a lot of features. It will have a lot of firmware updates. It does work. You can get on the air and make contacts with it right now. Some of the bells and whistles don't work, but the actual transmitting and receiving works. The antenna tuner works, that kind of thing. So yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely a fun project to tinker with. And uh, if you don't want to tinker with stuff, then don't buy it yet. Wait a few months. And uh, maybe go get it later or go spend twice the money and get a 705. 705 sure. is a better radio, but it's also twice the money. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's it really depends on what you're trying to do. So that's all, that's all I got to say. But uh, good. Well, we got two minutes till Frank's tr- stream starts. So Steve and Sean, thank you very much for joining tonight. Uh, we will catch you guys uh, on, on Frank's stream if you guys are going over there. And uh, Monday Night Ham Radio is tomorrow. So you guys catch us there as well. So 73 to all. Thanks for being here. And, uh, We'll see you next time. Put your comments in the chat below.